So I am back after a week of travel and I am um, sitting at my loom. I had literally finished this the night before we left <laughs> and I hardly know what I've, what I've done here. I, it's very thick. I remember I had a double length warp going on and um, I had my tape measure going. I wrapped it around because the tape measure is one of the favorite things for my cat to play with. So I didn't want her to get too interested in the weaving while I was away. Um, and yeah, I was thinking about it while I was gone and I was thinking, I hardly remember what I've done here. <laughs> so I remember I had a hand spun for the warp and I had hit about 54 inches on this second item that's on the loom, but I don't really know what the actual lengths are going to be when I take this off. So I'm going to disconnect my, not my tape measure now, and prepare to take this off the loom and see what I've got. It'll be interesting. Um, yeah, and then I remember the first one on here was a lot more dominant with the blue, the light blue color that I have on this warp. So I'm going to get my scissors and we'll cut this off and see what I've ended up with after a week of not looking at it. This will be fun. Alright, cut everything off and, and we'll see. the last couple days on the first part of this scarf that is going to be uh, that I've done a warp that is two scarves long for and um, I'm now to the end of it so if you see my my handy little tape measure here um, tape measure says I'm at about 70 inches and you know this this yarn's been stretching a lot it's wool and so I know when I take it off of the loom, it's gonna compact a bit because it's, it's really stretching a bit when I tension it and that's okay. Um, that's okay. So, you know, I've been just moving the tape measure along with these little binder clips here so that when I'm done with this particular scarf, I can just take off the tape measure. And now that I'm at this point, I have to decide um, I have to decide if I want to cut it off the loom and then retie on the next one, or if I want to just keep going with it on the same warp. Um, of course, first I have to also sew in my hem stitch, so I'm going to do that in a minute here. Um, but you know, I think for this one, I am going to actually leave it connected to the loom without taking it off. I am pretty pleased with how the fell line, which is this line where the new weaving goes after you beat it. I'm, I'm pleased with how it's pretty straight. You know, it's not 100% perfect, but it's it's good enough and it certainly won't be noticeable once it comes off the loom. So I'm gonna just leave it on here and that way I don't have to spend any time redoing the warp when I switch to the next one. So yeah, my next steps are gonna be to take my, my length of yarn here and then I'm going to hem stitch it and then I'm going to advance the warp by um, probably about a foot um, when I go to do the next the next part of the scarf but I will um, talk about that after I finish with the hem stitching. Okay I'm back and as you can see I have advanced the weaving to the point where there's a bunch of inches, probably about 12, um, before I start the new header, and that will be enough for me to have the fringe for the next weave. Um, the, the only other thing I've done is to make sure that I have something to beat against here, and also using 
the beam down there, making sure that it looks like it's straight so that I'll have a nice straight piece of weaving when I start up again after I put yarn onto my shuttle and get going. And then I'll just start like it's a new, um, a new project. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's always so interesting to remember what you've done. And yeah, I do remember that for the second one, I had done more like blocks of color and I'm actually ending up with a, a really, really cool plaid kind of look that, um, that I really like. That's really exciting. I can't wait to see what length I end up with. And here we have the part in the middle that I left to have as fringe in between the two items. And now we're getting back into the first woven item, which, as I said, is mostly this lighter blue. Um, with all these flecks of color that I had added because the yarn has so many flecks of color in it. Um, the light blue for the veil. Okay, now we're down at the end and we've got all my extra pieces here and all the, I don't know if you can see all the cardboard on the ground, but you can, you can hear all the cardboard. So, let me just kind of hold this up and you can see how I added in all these other bits to the first one. Um, but you can also see the long blue and the long blue stripes in the warmth, which are really kind of cool with those other contrast details. And then we have this other one where I decided to add a lot more of the dark blue and even some, some purples. So that's all pretty cool. I'm really gonna look forward to untying this now and then um and then i can measure the two different lengths and oh they're nice and soft too which is always delightful um all right so i'm gonna undo my my lashed on warp and we'll see what we've got so i have here my my super long item and basically going to lay it here on my very small craft table upstairs in my office slash studio and I'm going to use my quilting mat here to figure out how much space I ended up with between the two different layers of the project. So I'm just sorting out all of the pieces, making sure everything is straight. And, huh, one of them came undone. Kind of weird. Don't know why that happened. Looks like we've really got about 11 inches, which is about what I was aiming for. So that's, that's good. Um, oh, these pieces are from the hem stitching, right? Okay. So that's okay. So that means I'm gonna cut this at five and a half inches and I will take my also sewing tool here and measure to five and a half. I'm actually going to just kind of measure this. Yeah, we have 11 inches in between the two. So see me <laughs> and I have my my rotary cutter and I'm just going to cut firmly across the middle of each one and there now we have two separate lovely woven items um, and just in terms of length you know one of them was almost 70 inches when it came off of the loom and the other one was just over 50 and I'm curious to see how they stack up in terms of actual length and you can see that one of them is indeed a good foot or two longer than the other one um, 
all of my tape measures have ended up downstairs. So I'm gonna go get those and we can figure out what the actual length of these two items is now that I have taken them off the loom. So I'm back with my tape measure so we can see how long these are. And whew, walking up two flights, it gets me a little bit out of breath. Okay, so measuring out this one, we can see that taking it off the loom and off of tension, it has ended up being about oh, right around 50 inches, um, which is interesting. It's a little bit short, perhaps, for a scarf. I don't know. Let's see this here. Uh, we've got, yeah, it's a little bit short for a scarf, but I, I've been wanting to play around with, okay, it's twisted, so that's actually cool. Making a cowl where you take one end and it's attach it on like this, something like that. So this actually might be kind of fun length for that. I'm not sure. I'll have to play around with it a little bit. But I very much like how that one came out. And then we have this one here that I just I think it's so cool with the way the stripes, the, the warp stripes contrast with the little bits of color that I've put into the weft. I really like doing that. Um, okay, so this one I think ended up being close to 70 inches when it was on the loom, so we're just going to measure it up. And yeah, it, it lost a couple. It's 68, which is actually a really great length for a scarf for a lot of people. Um, I'm on the shorter side, so I tend to take them shorter, but I know people like them longer. Uh, but just trying that on, I can see that it's going to be a great length for a scarf. Um, I think I'm going to do some evening off of the fringe ends, and then I'm going to go wash these, and we'll see how they transform after they come out of the bath. Um, I'm actually really curious because this one is using a lot more of the same in the warp and the weft. And this one is using a much thinner warp than a lot of the yarns in the weft. So I'm really curious what the fabric is going to be like when I take each of them, um, when, when each of them is washed and dried. All right. So I did end up making a scarf out of the light blue one, and that one sold very quickly on Etsy. Um, for the other length, which was shorter, I did make a cowl, um, and that one's still available on my Etsy store, with the link below if you're interested. It was a lot of work, and at times a highly frustrating process to work with a double length warp. I highly recommend it if you're looking to save some time with the warping, and if you have a lot of yarn that you really love that you think will work well for a warp and yeah have you ever tried this let me know in the comments i'd love to hear what you have worked on until next time i'm emily and you've been watching stitch together fiber arts